What's good guys, Tiger here, welcome to the channel. Today's video, I have got the five attachments you should avoid at all costs in modern warfare. So, I think we can all agree that creator class and attachment customization is just insane in modern warfare. I absolutely love it. The fact that we have so much customization, pretty much like 60 attachments for every single weapon, that is just crazy and I'm very, very grateful for Infinity Ward for adding that. I think it's made creating classes so much fun, so much more personal, and it really does allow true experimentation with your classes and have a class that is just completely unique to you. However, there are definitely some attachments in certain categories that I believe you should avoid because they are just irrelevant. They do not have the, the perks or the benefits compared to some other attachments, perhaps in the same categories. So without further ado, let's get straight into the video. So the first one is a rear grip. Now there are only three rear grips pretty much for most attachments. You've got the granulated grip tape, the rubberized grip tape, and the stippled grip tape. Now two are good and one is just trash. And that trash grip tape is the granulated grip tape. You want to avoid this at all costs. There is no benefits to this compared to the others. So the granulated grip tape gives you aiming stability and aiming walking steadiness at the cost of aiming walking movement speed. Now if you ask me, the most important variable out of those three is aiming walking movement speed. I would rather have that as my one benefit at the cost of aiming stability and aiming walking steadiness. It's just, it's just awful, like aiming stability, I always take the hit on that because it really makes such of a little difference. It barely affects anything and aiming walking steadiness, most of the time that isn't really going to affect you. Very rarely are you going to be moving about while shooting and if you do, you might be at close to medium ranges, you might have control of your weapon and those little subtle differences might not actually make an effect. Now let's compare that to the other two grip tapes that you can choose from. The first up is rubberized grip tape and this is for your weapon that you want more control with. The buff you get is recoil control, a big one, a real big buff that you pretty much go out of your way to look for to make your weapons better. If you've got a weapon that has a lot of vertical recoil, then recoil control is going to help that and reduce that to help you control your weapon better. And it comes at the cost at aiming stability. Like I said, irrelevant. You don't care about aiming stability. It's really not that bad. And for recoil control, hell yeah, let's take that. That is a that is something that I would always go for. If I've got a weapon like a Scar H or a AK-47, that's a weapon that I am definitely going to take the rubberized grip tape for. And then the other grip tape is perhaps even better, a tape that you're probably going to use on 90% of your weapons, and it's the stippled grip tape, and it gives you ADS speed, what is a massive one, especially modern warfare, because the ADS speed is pretty slow overall, and a sprint to fire speed buff. Getting a buff to the sprint to fire speed is a real big game changer, and you rarely find it. There's not that many attachments where you get the benefit of sprint to fire speed. So that is just amazing. What a grip tape to have. You pretty much want this on every submachine gun, every shotgun if it's available. Even on an LMG, the stippled grip tape might be a better option than the rubberized grip tape. And what is the nerf? Aiming stability. Who cares? This is an easy decision. Very easy. There are only two choices. Rubberized grip tape or the stippled grip tape. You do not want the granulated grip tape if those other two attachments are available. That is a complete avoid attachment. Moving on to number two, and this one is a little controversial, and it is the laser sights. Now, there are three laser sights that you can choose from, and me personally, I only believe in the first one, the one milliwatt laser sight, that only gives you one buff and zero nerfs, and it's just improving your hipfire accuracy like we know the laser sight to be. 
Now the five milliwatt laser and the TAC laser, the reason why I pretty much disregard these two sights on pretty much every class, I have used it once on a sniper and it's because of the nerf. Your laser sight is visible to enemies. And there are so many people using this and I really don't understand why because these people are just not understanding at how important that laser sight is. If the enemies can see your laser sight and you're playing against someone who has a brain, they're going to see that and instantly prepare for it and then make decisions based on that information. Honestly, if you're pre-aiming a corner and your laser sight is just going to be staring right towards that corner, they're just going to be able to see it. Any half-decent player wouldn't run into that situation when they can see the laser sight. They'd probably wait for you to come to them. They might wait until you look in a different direction. Obviously, the laser sight only appears when you're aiming down sight. It doesn't appear if you're just hip-firing. There are obviously ways where you can try and hide your laser sight. You can lower the laser sight. This is something I do when I'm playing 2v2 gunfight. You might also want to aim it on a surface where the enemy can't see it if you want to be really smart about it. Obviously, a lot of dumb players won't notice the laser sight or won't react to it in a positive way and just go straight in and allow you to kill them. And those laser sights do have some really cool buffs. The 5 milliwatt laser gives you increased hip fire accuracy compared to the 1 milliwatt laser and a sprint to fire speed buff. What I mentioned earlier is insane. The TAC laser gives you ADS speed, aiming walking movement speed and aiming stability at the cost of a visible laser. So there are some really cool buffs in that. The sprint to fire speed and the ADS speed, they are some good buffs. But honestly, you really need to take into account that visible laser. If you're playing something like Search and Destroy or if you're just playing 6v6, in fact, even when you're playing Ground War, if an enemy sees that laser, they can just adapt to it. If they see that laser and they have a stun grenade or a flash, they're just going to see it, throw it against the wall, stun you the fuck out, and then just get that easy kill. Now, I don't know how many pro players or YouTubers or pub stompers are using this attachment. They might completely disregard everything I'm saying and might swear by the 5 milliwatt laser or the TAC laser. But in my opinion, I would honestly avoid it because the problem with it is you're never going to know exactly how many times the enemy notice your laser and then change their plans and then that prevents you getting that kill. You are never going to have that information. There's a lot of these passive perks and attachments. If you have Ghost on perk 2, something that hides you from the UAVs, this is something that you're never really going to know whether you have been killed by someone who spotted you on the radar instead of just finding you in their path, just seeing you. You're never going to really get that information. And that is why I would always avoid, and that is why I'm always going to try and avoid those situations happening. I want to stay hidden. I don't want the enemies to know that I am pre-aiming a corner or I am running towards them. Okay, the third attachment, and it's having a three times scope or higher on a shotgun or a submachine gun. Now there are tons of optics in this game. Pretty much every weapon has near enough 20 different optics you can choose from. You've got loads of different reflex sights, you've got some recon sights, you've got a lot of hybrid scopes where you've got like a three times scope and then a reflex sight. You've got some really cool scopes on some weapons that have a pretty decent range where you have thermal scope and night vision and things like that. But honestly guys, really honestly, you do not want to put a 3x scope or higher on a submachine gun or a shotgun. I've seen it possible and it just blows my mind, like, you just do not want those attachments. Those attachments are not designed for those weapons. Yes, they're available because obviously this game wants to cater to every single type of player. But if you're trying to turn your submachine gun into like an assault rifle or a light machine gun, then why don't you just go for the assault rifle or light machine gun? Your weapon, your submachine gun or shotgun is designed for those close ranges. I know some of these shotguns have crazy range in this game, especially, especially if you have the slug shot. It will basically turn your shotgun into a sniper. 
But nonetheless, these weapons are specialised weapons and they are good at those close ranges. So don't fuck them up by putting on a really zoomed in scope because that's going to really hurt you in those close range gunfights. I'm using the P90 at the moment and its recoil is just the best thing ever. It literally does not have any. Now some people might think, oh it doesn't have much recoil, I will put a decent scope on it, like a 2 times or a 3 times. No point, just have the iron sights or a simple reflex sight if you really want and it will be absolutely fine. You can completely map someone with reflex sights, they're really really good. So just don't do it to yourself, use the reflex sights, use a hybrid scope if you really want to, but try and avoid going for those really zoomed in scopes on weapons that they just don't belong on. Next up, number four, is a muzzle attachment and it is the flash guard attachment. This attachment gives you muzzle flash concealment at the cost of bullet velocity. Now bullet velocity is something that's pretty decent. It's basically allowing your shots to fire faster so if you're going for those long range shots, your bullets are going to connect earlier. But the muzzle flash concealment, honestly, that is just something I have never had a problem with and I have never heard anyone complaining about the muzzle flash. And if you're thinking about using this on a assault rifle or a submachine gun, popular weapons like that, it's just crazy. I mean if we look at some of the other muzzles in this category, I rarely use muzzles anyway. I think barrels are a lot better and there are lots of other good categories to choose from for your five attachments. But if you do want to choose some of the other muzzles, you've got a lot of suppressors that are really good. That's including the monolithic suppressor, what is probably the best. Not only does it suppress your sound, getting you off the compass and other radars, but it increases your damage range, what is awesome. It is at the cost of ADS speed and aiming walking steadiness, but it's really not that bad. And then you've also got the compensator as a muzzle, what helps with your recoil control, what as I've said before is just amazing, that's a big big buff, at the cost of ADS speed and aiming stability. So looking at the other muzzles, there are some really good options, but the muzzle flash is just dog shit, like just avoid that attachment. Muzzle flash really should not be one of your worries or concerns. Okay, and the fifth attachment you should avoid, and it is an underbarrel attachment, and it is pretty much any of the M203 40mm launchers. Now, there are some that I guess are okay. If you just want to use the standard noob tube where it shoots an explosive, that can be all right, but I've been using it in gunfight and it really does not do that much damage. You also have the incendiary like fire explosive grenade, what's pretty decent. But then you've got some weird ones, like you've got a you've got a smoke screen or a flash or a stun, and there's just some really just crap irrelevant underbarrels. Now if you look at some of the underbarrels you can get, you've got the commando foregrip, you've got the ranger foregrip, you've got the tactical foregrip, you've got some really decent foregrips that will give you recoil control buffs and some really decent buffs that I use often on a lot of weapons. Pretty much every one of my class will have an underbarrel. You also have the bipod underbarrel, what is great for getting those crouch kills. It's really good for snipers. But if you're looking in the assault rifle category and you're looking at some of these noob tubes, they're trash at the moment. They really, really are. They're just worthless. But those are the five attachments I recommend you should avoid in Modern Warfare when creating your classes. Now, I didn't mention any of the perk attachments. There are some really useless ones in the perk attachment category, but there were just so many different ones, and they really do vary on each different type of weapon, so I didn't think it was going to be worth covering in this video. But I hope you got some useful information out of this video. If you did and you want to see more, consider subscribing and turning on notifications to stay updated on all my latest content. But that's all from me. Take care, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.